Hey everyone, Tony Spinjuli here with day one of a free to play series. I intend on building this account up from start with no money to help some new and current players progress without feeling overwhelmed, but I will point out any offers in the game that I feel are worth spending money on. I apologize in advance for my microphone and my voice sounding robotic. During this free to play run, I'm going to focus on characters you get, characters you can farm early, and characters you might be able to obtain through promotion, events, and the like. As RNG is an important factor of this game, your mileage may vary, but I think that the content in this video will give you a great idea of how to progress beyond the RNG. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and skip this intro and get right into the game. Now as a free to play player, there are about three rules you should stick to to find success. The first, set goals and stick with them. For this run, my goal is to have a very strong defenders team and very little will deviate me from that strategy. I know what I want to do, I know how I want to farm, I'm using resources like msf.gg as well as the Marvel Strike Force Discord to find where to find characters, how to farm them, and what the best way to level them up is. This game will throw events at you, such as legendary events, character blitzes, and these events are great, but if you're not going to be spending money, these are the events that are going to try to sway you. If you have no intention of spending money, you will not be able to get things on the first run. It's unfortunate, but it's true. However, this game is a marathon for you and not a race, so you're going to be able to eventually have everything. Use your time to build how you want. Build good arena defense team, build a good arena offense team, so you can challenge for high score in arena. Build a whole bunch of multiple teams for Blitz, if that's where you want to be. Pick your target of attack and focus on it. Rule number two, your effort has to be greater than everyone else, because you're not spending money. You need to make sure you do your dailies, you need to make sure you come in for those free energy refreshes, set a timer on your phone if you have to. These are what is going to separate your success from the success of someone who refreshes energy all the time. In the third rule, track progress by milestones you set for yourself. It can be very difficult to feel like you're going places and very easy to feel like you just hit a wall. It's okay. Reassess, find a new focus, and move forward. As time progresses, your focus will spread thin, and that's the way the game has to be. Just always track your progress so you know what the best options are. This premium orb will always be Luke Cage, which is excellent because we need him. The characters we get to begin with, Luke Cage, Spider-Man, Shield Medic, Punisher, will all be very important parts of our team going forward. As we progress, we will also unlock Electra, Crossbones, and the ability to farm Bullseye and Yondu. Additional characters that we will need to unlock to progress through both the heroes and the villain storyline. Another thing to keep in mind as you go, these early first 15-20 levels will see an exorbitant amount of energy. Your energy total will be over cap for the first hour or two of gameplay. That will not be normal. Leveling up gives you about 40 energy, I believe. It scales up later, which is great for right now. And incredibly helpful to power through this early content and build up some funds. But it will not matter later, as you're getting significantly less energy and most of your energy is used to farm content. Whether it be items that you need to upgrade, character shards themselves, that's where all of your energy is going to go. We're going to try to utilize nothing but free refreshes during this campaign, occasionally spending some of our hard-earned cores to get an energy refresh. Very, very rarely, if ever, will we ever refresh a node. 
the cores are worth just so much more. I will speed up all combat from now on so we can talk more about strategy. This is a great opportunity to talk about team balancing. Early on, we'll have access to about five or six different characters, and it's very important that we keep them all around the same level, same gear, same power. This will make for even distribution of responsibility across the team. And as time progresses, it will be a really great strategy for building Blitz teams. But that's a conversation for another video. Now the end of this fight should bring us to our first level up, our first energy refresh, and an opportunity to look at our resources. Level 2 feels real good. 1000 gold, 20 cores, some XP. We're going to look at the gold and we're going to notice that right now we don't have much. Later game, at level 65, you average about 181 gold per energy spent. That number is significantly lower here, as you can tell. There's 530 gold for spending 6 energy on here. Not much. But you also don't need much early on. You'll end up with a pretty decent bank if you're focusing on only one team. Also, right here is the Synergy UI. Just a little tooltip that tells you what benefits characters are gaining from being on a team. This one has Luke Cage giving hero allies a chance to attack with him on his basic. You can always check this at any time to determine what the best options are for your team. We'll use this fight to discuss star level. Every mission has a maximum level of three stars, which means you cleared the mission without losing a character. If you lose a character, you lose a star up to two. For example, in this fight, my medic died, and although I did succeed, I failed to receive the third star. A third star allows me to auto-farm a mission. Auto-farming is a key aspect of this game in order to farm shards, gear, and even gold. Speaking of gear, we've unlocked our first piece. We'll get into more detail as I unlock more, but as they come in, Equip them to your strongest characters to make them stronger. We've also got our first daily quest, which should level us to level 3. Ta-da! Every day, you're given about 10 total quests. All of these quests will help you progress by giving you experience, gold, cores, and sometimes unique materials. Additionally, this game has login calendars, and every four hours, a free basic orb. A basic orb has between one and five shards of most characters in the game. I'll go ahead and open those immediately. Also, occasionally, we receive messages in the mail from the devs. This is the primary source of contact they have with you. Sometimes they have little treats. Sometimes it's just generic browser information. But it's always good to check. Rewards are given through this. Alliance credits, which we'll get into in a later video, and look, free cores. But now's a good time to look at what we have. We have 142 energy out of 62, so we're going to have to start spending. And we have a poorly balanced team. Spider-Man is very strong. Shield Medic is very weak. So we're going to look at the characters, we're going to see what we can do. The first thing we can do is raise their power level. They should even everything out, more or less. It's important to keep track of star level. Star level is a very small but relevant boost your characters have, which is why at level 2, Spider-Man and Luke Cage are close, and Shield Medic is far away. But for now, let's go back, clear out some more content. It's not necessarily worth it to try to two-star this. I don't think my characters have gotten that much stronger. So we're just going to progress through the story, Hit Heroes 1 4. See how we can do here.
a few games down, and now we're learning about achievements through in-game tooltips. The achievements are nice, free stuff you get for completing the game. Don't focus on any of them, but over time, you'll obtain quite a bit of rewards from doing them, so just keep your eye out. This one, for example, is the first achievement of merit, as it gives you 44 of 45 shards to unlock Punisher. Now, Punisher is an important part of our team we're building, so this is already great. And as you can see, it sets up for building the team now. That said, every third node is considered a boss node in this game, and will usually either have a marquee character shard available, or a particularly useful gear item. I don't know if my team is strong enough to beat this node right now, but there's only one way we're going to find out. And it looks like we were, but we'll check our daily objectives, and we'll go to our roster, and we'll finally start leveling up characters. We have some pieces of gear, we'll make them a little bit stronger. Check our total level, which will be available right up there. So I can level these characters two more times. I have some extra cash in the bank, I'm not really worried about blowing it. And I need it to progress. Progressing is super important. Now. That team got a little bit stronger. We're one shot away from Punisher. Let's get that unlocked. And all it took was a moment to take a step back, power up a little. And we've unlocked Punisher, our fourth character, and vital component of our Defenders team. Let's recruit him here. Let's spend some time powering him up. Get him around the same as everyone else. Put some extra materials on him. We should be ready to go. And early on, every character you get makes every future mission that much easier. And if we take a quick look, we'll know we're relatively close to leveling, and we have more than enough energy to get there, so let's keep progressing. And now that we have the fourth character, I'd like to change how my team is ordered a little bit. Early on, it's not going to make much of a difference, but... I like to keep my squishier characters in the middle, and my strongest character to a side. Spider-Man has an ability to dodge attacks better than anyone else, so if anyone hits Luke Cage, it has a less likely chance of splashing over to him. Luke Cage does taunt, so that's a really good lineup for these weak guys at the beginning. Well, that mission was easy. Let's see what this one gives us. Oh, this mission has a special objective. Take out the operator. Must be those guys with the arrows over their head. Let's focus them. Kill them as quickly as we can. And claim victory. There are a lot of missions in this game with special objectives. Just pay attention as you unlock them. Now if we look here, we have the Yondu node. Yandu is one of the best characters in the game, and the fact that you can farm him early means you should farm him early. He unlocks, I believe, at 45, so spend your early game focusing on Yandu. You will be on this node for a good portion of the game, free to play or otherwise. He is that good.
Oh no, Hope just took out our weakest character. So while we did complete the mission and unlock the next chapter, we still have Yondu to deal with. Right now, we can throw energy at it, but we know we're going to progress, we know we're going to get stronger. Let's come back a little later. We'll have plenty of energy, we'll have plenty of time. So we'll come back to this. Right now, let's take a little segue and follow the game's instructions. Occasionally, events will be made available to players. All beginner players have access to the Electra and Crossbones farm events. Completing the first mission will unlock the character, and subsequent missions will make them a little stronger and give you some gold. These characters are very good, so it's very important we get to them as early as we can. See? It was quick, painless, and now we have a brand new character. Let's unlock her. Let's give her the old brand new character treatment. Get her some levels. Get her some gear if we have any. Get her ready to fight. So let's take our new Electra into a fight to get more Electra Shards. See how it goes. Excellent. For our troubles, five more Electra Shards, and we got a little gameplay with her in. Let's go one more in. Now if we take a look, the next one requires level 15 or higher, which we're just not at yet, so we're going to skip it for now, come back to it in about an hour or so. In the meantime, we'll just get us a brand new crossbones. Same team. Let's see how it works. And just like before, we have a brand new character. Let's level him up. Give him a shot. Crossbones is unique, as he's really not great until you can unlock his third ability. But when you can, it changes games. Crossbones' third ability is a massive AoE attack that does so much damage to both himself and everyone else. As you progress, you will find crossbones will be essential for plenty of content in this game. And I can come back to farming crossbones a little bit later. He's unlocked for now. That's all I need. Let's check my mail. Already did that. Thank you, game. And let's progress a little bit further in the storyline if we can. Or, we're so close to leveling, let's use one more attempt. Maybe we'll get lucky. RNG might be in our favor. But as you may notice, Crossbones and Elector will not be available for this fight, because only heroes are allowed in the Heroes campaign. Their time will come soon. Still beat it, but I still haven't three started. But the consolation is, we did in fact level. Our characters get to be a little bit stronger. So let's see what we can do now.
one thing we can do is look down here to see the power level of the characters we're going to be facing. In this case, it's a power level 140 Hawkeye, 141 Black Panther. So, we'll just assess that, build up our team, see how much stronger we can get. Now, just because it doesn't have a green plus sign doesn't mean there's no gear you can get. In this case, when you click on it, it'll show you the next node you can farm to get the gear you need. For example, right here, two pieces, another piece. This one, however, I haven't three-starred, so I can't auto it. I can attempt it, and it's the next match in the fight, so I might have to. But first, let's give the same treatment to everyone. Let's make sure everyone has as much gear as they can. Luke Cage had a full sweep, so I was allowed to bring him up to tier 2. Gives minimal power to all of his abilities. Even his overall power level doesn't go up that much. But as part of progression, gear tier will bring out new abilities, new levels of each ability, and something you should always look out for. Again, as long as they're all around the same, you should be fine. Now I'm not going to prioritize Crossbones because I can't use him yet. The next thing I know we need is in Heroes 2-1. So, let's go here, fix up the team if I need to, give it a shot. What I'll do here is move the medic as far away from everyone else, minimizing the splash damage and making her more survivable. As you can see, now we have these extra resources, so let's give our team a once over, power up who we need to, level up who we need to, and decide the next best course of action. Now let's check our achievements. Claim whatever we have here, move on over to daily objectives. Check out some good rewards. I'm always careful when I claim these early on. I want to make sure that I'm never over claiming and leveling myself up through these. I want to spend as much energy as possible before I claim so that when I level up, I'm refreshing but not over capped. It's a hard balance. Don't kill yourself over not doing it. And always remember every five minutes, your character generates one energy. And now we can check our mail. Usually it's just notifications, but sometimes they'll send us items. Like this, 5,000 premium orb fragments. That's enough for me to open three premium orbs. Premium orbs are like basic orbs, but a lot better. Premium orbs are like basic orbs, but you get 15 shards of anyone in the game, minimum. So, every time you get one, it's worth looking. If you notice here, there's 180 Loki shards. Loki is a jackpot character. He has a very, very low chance to pull, but let's see what we can do. Oh. Shield Operative, Immediate Unlock. This is a great character. It's going to help if she's a hero, and the shield characters have pretty good synergy. She's also a second healer, so this is really going to help my free-to-play team early on. Let's open our next orb. Iron Fist, excellent. I'm already on the game plan of unlocking the defenders, so 16 Iron Fist shards. That's a couple of days on average worth of the farming him, so 
when I get him. I'll get him a little bit quicker. And... Wow. <laughs> um, I was not expecting this. I pulled the jackpot character. Uh, as I mentioned, RNG and premium orbs can truly make your run. Uh, early on, good RNG can give you characters uh, you otherwise would have to pay for or farm for months. And in this case, RNG just gave me a character that is incredibly hard to get. Uh, and I'm looking forward to utilizing him. We'll just take a moment and look at him through. Now, <laughs> although I'm incredibly ecstatic that I've done this, uh, it's important to keep to the game plan. Uh, Loki is a great character, uh, incredibly hard to farm, incredibly useful, but I can't put all my resources into him right now. He's going to be great in the villain team. Let me just deal with this. But right now, I'm going to focus on shield operative, get her as high up as I can, and I will keep Loki around the same power level as the rest of my team, my villains team. As I'm going to be using them in the next part of the campaign, and it's very important that they are balanced as much as possible. Now, as I said, I'll be doing this free to play, but this is an absolutely phenomenal deal. If you are interested in spending any money, you should buy this. Or whatever the limited time new player special offer is. They're all great. Captain America, Black Widow, Black Panther, any of them are going to be amazing for you. If I was spending any money, there's no question I would spend $5 to unlock Deadpool. He's a god tier character. He would make most of my content easy, but if you're in the mood to spend money, this is the way to do it. There's other offers that are going to come up. I'll point them out when you should get them and when you shouldn't, but for the most part, if it's five dollars, it's probably worth spending. Just a quick look at everything else. Supplies, now we'll get to them in a little bit. Power cores, going to be completely irrelevant to me. I'm not spending any money, but in general, this is where you would go to buy them. But here we'll move on to orbs. We've seen premium orbs. We are Venom orbs are special to the event right now. The God of Mischief is also special to an event right now. Sharpshooter orb is tied in with something we have called Blitz. It's a mode that we've just unlocked. We'll get right into it, but for the most part, this is just a second chance opportunity to pull some number of shards. I think the lowest you can pull is six from them, so if you're six shards away from unlocking a character, it is it is totally worth it. If you're spending money, uh, most free-to-play players aren't even going to look at any orb. The RNG is just not there. If you look at these percentages, 180 Hawkeye shards are... 0.13% it's not there moving down basic orbs are free don't even bother gold orbs are generated over time don't even bother actually I'm fairly confident that uh, none of these orbs are worth any of the money you would spend for them, even if you weren't uh, wailing out. The, here, look at the percentage drops on the basic orbs. 35 cores for a chance at anyone. No one, no one's breaking the bank on that. The gold orb, yes, you're going to feel like you're bottlenecked in gold, but ultimately, don't waste your time. You get enough gold as you play, I promise you, it'll just feel like you're not making anything. And now we're moving to the completely useless section, the training orbs and the ability orbs. Never buy these. Even if you're a whale, never buy them. Mega orbs are event-based materials that give you 50 to 100 shards of a marquee, which means non-minion character. As you pull these, they will either be incredibly impressive or Ronin. Uh, Ronin is drastically the worst decision. Uh, 
Ultimus orbs, kind of the same. They're basically mega orbs that you can farm on your own, except it's only 15 shards. They're also the only way to gain access to the character Ultimus. Mm, is he good? I don't know. Only like five people have him, and they're whales. So, who cares? Let's not worry about characters that you need to spend a lot of money or be incredibly lucky to pull. When it comes to supplies, every day, a couple times a day, they're going to refresh. This is where you should pay attention to your cores. As you're farming and not spending them, you're going to have a stockpile of cores. If you need five shards of a, of a character that happens to show up, this is where you're going to dump that extra uh, currency. As for these guys, Blue Cage is farmable. We're not spending anything on him. Thanos, 900 cores for 10. He unlocks at 100. Not going to do anything. Shield Assault. Farmable, 360 is not where you're spending. You're looking for characters that are very hard to get, like Black Widow, and even then, not so much. You'll also scroll around and see all these tier items. Uh, they change as you level up, but anything with a green dot is an item you don't have. You have quests to buy stuff from the store three times a day, so pick up stuff that you need when you need it. Uh, also, if you click on an item, it'll show you who needs them, so the serum is needed by pretty much every one of my characters. Actually, every one of my characters upon second look. So, I should pick up one of these. Let's see what else we have. Blue items, that's for much later. That's after you reach gear tier 4. Alright, let's back out, claim some one of our achievements as they come up, take another look at daily objectives, and, oh, well, here it is. As I mentioned earlier, three times a day, you get access to campaign energy refreshes. As a free-to-play player, you do not get to miss these. Set a timer. Eastern time, 12, 6, and 9, up for two hours. I'm going to take this right here, and I'm going to start spending. So, let's take a quick look at our team, and let's get cracking on that campaign. Oh, it appears this next node is a medic farm node, and as I already have medic, I cannot wait to 3 star. Now the game is so kindly going to tell you what I already have, which is how to auto win matches. Not necessary right now, and I'm not really interested, I'm just going to move on to the next mission. I'll slow down the replay here, because this is another special mission. The only thing I need to do is to defeat Ronin. There's going to be some challenges. There's one taunter. He's probably going to taunt immediately, but get past him, get Ronin down, have everyone alive, easy 3-star. And now we're level 6. Normally, you know what to do. Level up the characters. I'm confident in my team. I'm just going to clear a little bit more out. This is another specialty mission. An escort mission. But this time I have shield operative to make sure that if that character gets a little too low, she can give him stealth and heal them up. Hmm. 
Well, we unlock the bullseye node, and a quick glance at this leaves a lot to be desired. I'll go level them up a little. Let's just... Oh, hi Nick Fury. Here to tell me about chat? And register my name. Sure, let's register Tony Scringili Free. I'm never going to use chat, but if you're looking for an alliance or to waste some time, feel free. And while we're here, we'll talk a little bit about this screen. It shows your information and gives you access to the power leaderboards. As you can see, some of the top players have the most powerful collections, and then you look at mine. I've only been playing this game for an hour, and I'm 2.6 million rank. So, it gives you an understanding of how many people are currently playing this game, and the way to go. The other two tabs, Strongest Alliance and Strongest Team, not going to tell you much. Just focus on your collection power and the people around you. That'll be the best way to gauge your progression. At this point, you kind of know the drill. We're going to collect some energy. We're going to level up some characters. We're going to do some more content. We're going to gain more levels. We're going to collect some energy. I'm not going to bore you with it. I'll fast forward through most of it. Well, now it's time to collect some more of these free things. Oh, supply purchases. Eh, might as well. Let's collect some more. What do I need? Green dot. Sure. Green dot. Sure. Yeah. I'll just buy it all. Clean this. Or farm more energy. Let me pick these up. But we're definitely going to farm some more energy. And I think it's time. Now that we've gained a few levels and some some gear, we go back and teach Yondu a thing or two. Ta-da! A little patience, and here we are. Three star. Like I said, you're not going to be able to beat everything by throwing yourself at it. You're wasting energy, you're wasting time. Come back. Level up. Spend some time on gear. And then you can progress. Like this. And now that we've hit level 8, we've unlocked challenges. Challenges are a very important part of this game. Every day you'll have access to two. They're on a rotation. Monday, Thursday. Tuesday, Friday. Wednesday, Saturday. And Sunday, everything. I'll give you a quick glimpse into them. And show you what you're in for. By now you probably caught the gist. Once you 3-star you can farm it. You get 3 attempts per day. 
if you can't move on to the next tier because of level or because it's too hard, don't worry. Wait a week. You'll be fine. These are meant to be slow grinds, and we already talked about this being a marathon, not a race. This next one requires only brawler and support type characters, of which I have four. Let's see how I can do. One last check of our daily objectives after we get an off blitz, and sure, we'll take this and notice that no matter what, every day, we're given 5 volt rain shards. You'll unlock him in 8 days, and over time, you'll have a 7 star Wolverine, which could be good for some people. Free to play, we're gonna need him, but he's not the best. Now, we've unlocked the third Heroes Campaign chapter, and the first Villains United. At this point, you know the drill. It's time to balance our teams, level everyone up, make sure everyone's ready to go. I'm not going to bore you with the details. By this point, you're doing it too. Okay, got everyone even. Now let's go here, and... We're going to farm this character up, because A, she's great, and B, realistically, she's going to be the third villain most new players get, so we might as well spend some energy, plus we have extra. Now we'll move on to the next villain, Bullseye. Let's see how many we get. None. Oh well. Might as well spend all the energy we can. And ta-da! Level 10, under an hour. This is the first milestone. You should expect to hit it in about an hour. A little bit more work and you'll get a couple more levels, but without spending any money and or cores, it's very difficult to go much further than 13 or 14 on the first day. Plus, you want to make sure you're farming all the characters. Let's open up this premium orb. Maybe we'll get another Loki. Who knows? Or Groot. Okay. And just crack open the basic orb. There's no such thing as that full. Especially now, five blue cages. I'm looking for those. And we should round out the day by claiming all that we can, gaining whatever levels it's going to give me and powering up as many of the characters I can. Alright, we have one new objective, complete three Villain Genet missions. We have a new offer. If you're interested in spending money, this is one I would pick up. Kingpin is a great villain, will get you through the early stages relatively quickly. And... Let's just fast forward through some power level. Whew, and that's a great place to end day one. Now just be sure to log in for energy refreshes and use it to auto win nodes with gear materials I need. You can plan that out by looking on msf.gg to see which characters need whatever gear. I'll provide links below. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please like, comment, and subscribe. To watch my progression on this account and my main account, or to ask any questions or for advice, Follow Tony Scangilli on Twitch.tv.